again. It's time for our so-called leaders and our black elected politicians to get off their rumps. Well, now, what an unexpected surprise to have the good Dr. Kincaid here in our midst. Tell us, good doctor, uh, how does it feel living at a palatial home bought by the poor black folks here? Now, this brother is just as guilty as the white man. As soon as he made his money from the poor blacks in the ghetto, he took it over to the white neighborhood to spend it. Not doing anything for the less fortunate brothers that he left here behind. That's exactly what I think he is. How you doing, brother? Could we go someplace and talk? Yeah, I know a great place. Where's your car? the purpose of your ghetto preaching. Purpose? Just look around you, man. There's your answer. For you one of the same as most bourgeois blacks. Just don't give a damn. Oh, come on, Mr. Avar. When you see one ghetto, you've seen them all. Exactly. But what's being done about it? Plenty. But more can be accomplished by the black voting bloc. Yeah, but that doesn't guarantee the right people getting into office. Already we have too many unconcerned politicians, black and white. City Hall doesn't hear the cries of the poor people in the ghetto asking for jobs and not welfare. So many of them are strangled by the ghetto through unfulfilled promises of unscrupulous politicians. Now, if these people had more influential blacks like you working for them, I'm sure we see some more changes. Well, unfortunately, there's some truth in what you're saying. But these things have a way of being solved. Yeah, sure, Doc. One day the ghetto will just vanish. Well, you see, Mr. Abar, I myself and my family are in a more dangerous situation than I have previously perceived. Well, so what you want me to do is be some kind of a bodyguard around the house and uh, around the family, huh? Uh, that's entirely correct. Why not just move back to the black ghetto? I don't have time to move back as yet. When my research is over with, I'll give moving back a strong consideration. And Mr. Abar, I'm presently involved in trying to find a prevention from heart disease. I also need someone of your physical stature to run some tests. Uh, sure, Doc. Then you'll come. Yeah, yeah, OK. Oh, well, fine, excellent. Uh, you'll get wages for this, of course. <laughs> yeah. Uh, about these tests, uh, what is it that you're going to want me to do? Oh, nothing very complicated, though somewhat strenuous. I need to test the heart under different conditions and so forth. Uh, we'll have to undergo a thorough physical examination. Yeah, well, I am a very healthy man, Doc. Well, so you appear to be, but uh, we can't leave anything to chance. Uh, that could be harmful repercussions. I'll report to the medical research lab at the university in a few days. Tommy, anything all right? Okay, I guess. Sure, you've been taking care of the pair away then, isn't it? Yeah, the best I can. Good, good Where's your mother? In the house. Get out of my yard, you little nigger, you. Give me my fruit. Oh, get out, you little pickaninny. I want my fruit. Don't you ever come in my white little black bastard. Get away from me. Get away. Daddy, Daddy, Miss Ava. What happened? She took the fruit and wouldn't give it back.
Hey, boss. Get him to our house. Who's your doctor? Doctor Swanson. Of Metal Park? The operator, give me Dr. Swanson of Metal Park. It's an emergency. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Swanson? Uh, this is Dr. Kincaid. Uh, we're the patient of yours who has just fainted. Uh, Mabel O'Dell. Uh, what is her medical history? Oh, yes. Oxygen. Yes, of course. Uh, that's most unfortunate. All right, doctor. Thank you. Bye. She needs oxygen. It's in my car. Yeah, what she needs is a breath of fresh air.